welcome to session 13, the last session for microeconomic theory. You've done well, and I believe you've read it and listened to the slides throughout. We are going to look at the second part of monopoly in this session. And under this session, we will discuss the long-run equilibrium of the monopolist. And also, we will describe some types of, discuss some types of monopolies. That is, we're going to look at the multi-plant monopolies. Also, we will look at the uh, price discriminating monopolies. And also, try to understand or look at, compare perfect competitive market to monopoly in terms of efficiency. And also, we will discuss market power of the firm and the learners index. We will start with the short run economy of the firm and proceed to the long run economy of the firm. Then we will look at three types of monopolies in this session. Monopoly, uh, price discriminating monopolies and also multi-plant monopolies. And we will look at efficiency of perfect competitive market and that of the monopolies. And also, we will analyze market power and the learner index. You should be able, by the end of this session, you should be able to derive the learner index. Also, be able to distinguish between the efficiency level and the perfect competitive market and that of the monopolies. You should be able to discuss two uh, various types of monopoly, monopolistic firm, firms that we have. And also, you should be able to discuss the short and the long run equilibrium of the monopolist. Again, the textbooks are the same. Uh, Jeffrey Perloff, Microeconomics, and uh, Variance Intermediate Micro. Now, just as we saw in uh, the first part of monopoly, the monopolist will always equate uh, the price, uh, the marginal revenue to the marginal cost in order to maximize its profit. And that the firm will always charge a price that is greater than the marginal cost, as well as the marginal revenue. And we also realize that for the firm to sell an additional unit of the commodity, the firm must be willing to reduce the price because of the downward sloping nature of our demand curve. And if the firm charges a price, that is equal to the short-run cost curve or the short-run cost, then the firm is enjoying a break-even or zero economic profit or normal profit. If the firm charges a price that is greater than the cost per unit of uh, producing the commodity, then the firm enjoys super normal profit. And if the price is less than the cost per unit of, the produ of producing the commodity, then the firm is making losses in the short run. Now, we can derive the short-run equilibrium by having a demand function. So let's start with our demand function and say, assume that our demand function is Q as a function of P. We can make a P the subject of the equation, and our inverse demand is going to be, our inverse demand function is going to be P equals to Z as a function of Q. And our cost function, we are going to say a C as a function of Q. So for profit, our profit is equal to total revenue minus total cost. So if you have your profit and you maximize our revenue and minimize our cost, we will be able to maximize our profit. So taking the first other condition, and we equate that to zero. So it becomes, it gives us the, uh, the pi, the q, as uh, equals to d, d, t, r minus d, uh, t, c into bracket the q. That is the t, t, r divided by the q minus the t, c divided by the q. And that is your marginal revenue minus marginal cost, which is equal to what? Zero. And we know that for that, my, for, for us to maximize profit, also the slope of the marginal cost curve must be greater than the slope of the marginal revenue. And that is your profit maximization. So this profit maximization condition is the same
as that of the perfect competitive market. And in the long run, what the monopolist can do is the monopolist can decide to produce at a suboptimal level, that is, at a declining part of the LAC, can produce at the minimum part of the LAC, or can produce at the rising part of the LAC. In other words, the monopolist can operate at a suboptimal level, at an optimal level, or will surpass the optimal level. We will discuss three types of monopolists. We will look at the plant, multi plant monopolists and the price discriminating monopolies. The multi plant monopolies is a monopoly that produces a homogeneous product using different plants. This type of monopolies will behave differently from the single operating monopolies. A typical example of this is the Volta River Authority. The Volta River Authority generates electricity but it uses different plants. It uses the Akosomo Dam, it uses or generates electricity from the Bui Dam, also generates electricity from the Tama plant in the western region. And the price discriminating monopolist is a monopolist who sells the same product to different consumers at different prices. And the difference in prices is not as a result of differences in the cost of producing the commodity. Now, let's look more into the uh, monopolies, the uh, multi plant monopolies. First, we have to make some assumptions. And we are going to assume that monopolies op operate just two plants that is, plants A and B. Each of these plants have a different cost structure. And we're also going to assume that the monopolies know. The monopolist knows its demand curve and by extension knows the market demand as well. Since it knows the market demand and it knows the marginal revenue cost function, since it knows the margin, since it knows the demand curve, it definitely means it knows its marginal revenue function. We also assume, we also assume that the firm knows the cost structure of each plant. Given these assumptions, the monopolies, for the monopolies to maximize profit, it has to make two decisions. First, it has to decide on the total output to produce using both plants in order to maximize its profit. Then the second decision that the firm will have to make is how do I distribute these two output among the two plants in such a way that I will maximize my profit? That is, what quantity should each plant produce. But let's note that the marginal cost for the firm, the total marginal cost for the firm is equal to the marginal cost incurred in using plant A plus the marginal cost in using plant B. So the summation of the two marginal, the marginal cost from the two plants will give you the total marginal cost of the firm. But then for the firm to maximize profit also, the firm must choose an output or must produce an output in each plant in such a way that the marginal cost in A must be equal to the marginal cost in plant B and must be equal to the total marginal cost. So in this case, the firm will produce an output of QA using plant A and an output of QB using plant B. And that QA plus QB must give us the total output of the firm. So even though we are saying that the marginal cost of A is equal to the marginal, the marginal cost of A plus the marginal cost of B must be equal to the total marginal cost, we are also saying that you must allocate output in such a way that marginal cost A must be equal to that of marginal cost B equals to the total marginal cost. And when that happens, the firm maximizes its sort of profit. Then the second type of discrimination we are going to look at, the second type of monopolies, uh, monopoly that we are going to look at is a price discriminating monopolist. This monopolist uh, sells the same commodity or slightly differentiated product to different consumers at different price. And as I already said, the difference in price is not as a result in differences in the cost of producing the two, uh, commodity. 
and the monopolies will distribute on the basis of, on a number of uh, based on a number of uh, factors. The monopolies will discriminate on the basis of income, on the basis of the purchasing power of the consumer, on the basis of geographical location, on age, sex, and the quantity that you purchase. Let's take for example, discrimination occurs many times in our lives, but we do not tend to notice it. Let's take for example, if I go out there and I purchase a bottle of water, uh, bottled water. I'm going to buy, currently, I'm going to buy it somewhere about uh, one CD per bottle. The monopolist is going to discriminate on the basis of one income, two, the purchasing power of the consumer, three, the geographical location of this consumer, age, sex, and also on the quantity that you purchase. So let's start with income. If the monopolist believe that an individual earns a higher income, the monopolist can charge a higher price for this individual and a lower price for individuals that the monopolist believes are belong to the lower uh, income bracket. Also related to that is the purchasing power. If the monopolist believe that the consumer has a high purchasing power, then the monopolist is likely to charge this individual a higher price. The monopolist also can discriminate on the basis of geographical location. That is, if you find yourself in an urban area, you end up paying a, a higher price. And when you find yourself in a in rural area, you pay a lower price. Then also on the basis of age, the monopolist can decide, okay, uh, what, if you're a school child or you are a child, you pay a lower rate or a gate, lower gate fee compared to adults. And adults will end up paying a higher price for the commodity or the service. The monopolist can decide, okay, uh, ladies will go, will have, a, will pay a lower fare and gentlemen will pay a lower, a higher rate. Or they can, you can have a situation whereby the ladies will enter for free and males will have to pay their gate fees. On the basis of quantity, the monopolist can also discriminate. The monopolist can say that you are buying a higher commodity, you are buying a higher amount, so you pay a lower price. And the lower amount that you purchase, you are going to pay a higher price. Take for instance, if you buy a bottled water, uh, a 500 milli milliliter bottle of water, you're going to pay, uh, let's say, one CD. But if you are buying the box of that same uh, 500 millimeter of water, you are going to pay about 18 CDs or 20 CDs. And the box contains 24, that is 24 CDs. If you are buying them individual, but they are buying individual bottles. Okay. So that is a form of discrimination. You end up paying a lower price when you buy it in bulk and you pay a higher price when you buy it uh, individually. Mm. Now, for the monopolies to uh, be able to discriminate, some condition must be, uh, uh, must be in existence. First, the market for the commodity should be divided into two sub-markets, if, or two markets. If the monopolist is unable to distinguish between these two markets or divide the market into two parts, then the monopolist will not be able to discriminate. And this, being able to divide the market into two uh, sessions or two parts will mean that each market, each of the markets must have different elasticities of demand. If the price elasticity of demand happens to be the same in the two markets, then the firm cannot discriminate. So the price elasticity of demand must be different in the two individual, in the two markets or for the two individuals. Then also, if the, if the firm is able to divide the market into two parts, or subdivide the market, then the, the firm must also make sure there is no seepage of information from one market to the other. In other words, it should not be possible for one fair, for an individual to purchase a commodity in the low price market and sell in the high price market. Or individual in the high price market must not be able to tell that the commodity is being sold in the high price market in a low price market. 
then the firm must also possess monopoly power. If the firm does not possess some level of monopoly power or a degree of monopoly power, the firm will not be able to discriminate. There are some reasons why the firm will engage in price discrimination. And the firm will do so in order to increase its total revenue. The firm will do so in order to stay in business. Else the firm will be making losses and will have to leave the industry. The firm will also discriminate in order to make sure that the product is more affordable to consumers who cannot purchase a commodity at the market price. And for the monopolies to discriminate, the demand, the total demand, we must know the total dem the demand firm, the demand for the firm, and also the marginal revenue. What we are going to say is that our demand for the monopolies will be equal to the total demand, will be equal to the demand in market A plus the demand in market B. The same applies to the marginal revenue. Our marginal revenue in market A must plus that of market B must be equal to the total marginal revenue. Again, just as we saw under multi-plant monopolies, for the price of creating monopolies to maximize profit, the monopolies must make uh, some decisions. Three critical decisions must be made. First, what should be the total output to produce? And what quantity should be sold in each of the markets? Then lastly, the firm will have to decide the price that it should charge in each of the markets. When the firm is able to make these decisions, then the firm will be able to maximize profit. And in maximizing profit, the firm will allocate output in such a way that the marginal revenue for market A must be equal to the marginal revenue in market B and must be equal to the total marginal revenue. When that happens, then the firm will be able to maximize profit. There are three types of price discriminating firm. The first is the first degree price discrimination. And this is also known as a perfect price discrimination. And it is a type of price discrimination uh, in which the consumer is made to pay the maximum possible price that he is willing to purchase a commodity at. In other words, the consumer is made to pay the reservation price, which is the highest price that the consumer is willing to pay for the commodity. And in this case of price discrimination, the entire consumer surplus of the monopoly of the consumer is taken away. So the consumer has no consumer surplus in this type of discrimination. A typical example is an individual visiting a private doctor. The doctor assesses the individual and sees that, oh, this individual may be rich and can pay a higher price and makes the individual pays that high price. So in this case of monopoly, the monopolist assesses every consumer and charges the consumer accordingly. Then the second is the second the, the second type of discrimination is the second degree price discrimination. And in this case, the discrimination is done on the basis of a quantity that you purchase. If you purchase in bulk, you pay a lower price, and when you purchase a lower amount, you purchase a, you pay a higher price. So the discrimination is based on the amount of the commodity that you are purchasing. A typical example is when you, you purchase a family pack soap, soap powder, for example, you pay a lower price compared to buying them in smaller quantities. And again, in this case, part of the consumer surplus is taken away. But the consumer will still have some surplus that ASOT left. And that can be seen in this diagram. Then the last of type of price discrimination is the third degree price discrimination. And in this case, the consumer, uh, the monopolist, discriminate on the basis of age, sex, location, and other characteristics. And also here, the consumer's, uh, part of the consumer surplus is taken away. And there are various examples that are provided 
in the slides. There are some benefits to be derived when a firm engages in price discrimination. It allows, for example, it allows non-profitable firms to break even or even make profit. Uh, some group of consumers who cannot purchase a commodity are able to purchase it. Some groups also tend to gain from the lower prices. It also leads to the avoidance of congestion in the market. There are some disadvantages that you can uh, that can uh, arrive out of arise out of price discrimination. For example, as a result of price discrimination, the price is greater than marginal cost, and that leads to allocative inefficiency. Also, there is also the decline in consumer support. That will mean that the welfare of the consumer reduces. Those who pay, those who pay higher prices for the commodity may be the poorest. Adult, the adults, for example, in the case of uh, discrimination on the basis of age, age uh, adults who may be unemployed may end up paying a higher price. I have again provided a question at the end of the slides. Try your hands at this, at this question. Thank you, and I wish you all the best in the exams.